Time for a little generator service. What I like about this generator is you can pretty much do the oil change toollessly. In other words, I'm not going to need a wrench to drain the oil, and uh, I'm not going to need anything to, I should not need anything to take off the oil filter. Remove my oil filler cap. Put that in a place where it doesn't get dirty. Now I've created uh, a positive airflow entry point, I can open up this petcock, which will drain the oil, into this capturing vessel. It's only two quarts got to drain out, so shouldn't have to wait long. Also got to replace the air filter. I have been in some majorly serious windy, dusty conditions uh, over the past month. All over the southwest, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, it's been super dusty, super windy. I haven't seen rain since I left Memphis. The air cleaner cover comes off without tools, lifts away just like that. Take your nice new air cleaner, put it back in the same way the other one came out, stay. Once the new air cleaner is in place, take your air cleaner cover and snap it back into place. So, uh, hey, have you ever been to Pikes Peak? Well, while I was in Colorado, I visited Pikes Peak and the Rocky Mountain National Park. You know, I've been in the Rocky Mountains before. I skied in Breckenridge uh, for several years, Vail Pass, Frisco, Copperhead, that whole area, very beautiful. So I gotta tell you, Pikes Peak was, well, I really enjoyed about Pikes Peak was not just the beauty, but the drive. I mean, I'm talking switchback after switchback after switchback. I mean, I would have been more comfortable on a motorcycle, but being in a car, you're a lot bigger and you hug a lot of edges that have no guardrails and it's a complete drop off. So it makes the drive really, really exciting. Right at about 11,000 feet or so now, you can see there's a lodge behind me, which is kind of cool that you could just kind of pull over and, and uh, have a nice meal. up here, about 12,500 feet, maybe we're right around 13,000 feet now, 57 degrees, getting chilly. So after 
removing the oil filter and all of the oil is now drained out I'm going to install the new oil filter after pouring some new oil into the new oil filter and remember to put a nice light coat of the new oil on the filter gasket okay I have a nice new clean shiny oil filter in place time to add some oil don't forget to use the translucent guide on the side of the container shows you how much oil you're adding yes yeah, so getting to the top of Pikes Peak was um, very thrilling because the dynamics of the environment the changing of, of going from uh, basically an area with a lot of juniper and pinyon pine to the conifers and now to the Aspen level where there's nothing pretty much but tundra and rock and the landing area of the uh, peak of the summit of Pikes Peak is oh man what a lot of tourists and stuff but once you get off and find a place to yourself where you can actually take some pictures and take in the view uh, it's breathtaking There are several ways to get to the top of Pikes Peak. You can drive up like I did. You can hike up. Uh, you can be part of a rally that gets together with motorcycles or three-wheelers or bicycles or whatever and ride up that way. Or you can take the tram, the train. It's kind of a, a cog train. I forget what they actually call it, but it's a cog tram or something. But it's got a track with um, teeth in it, and the train has a cog wheel on it that interlocks in those teeth and basically pulls it up the mountain. Well, that was really cold and windy. I don't know why I even tried bothered. Why I even bothered talking? But uh, we're on our way down now. Let's see how creepy looking it gets. Dipstick going in.
level check. We're good. We're good to go. You can see it is not very deep in there. The next thing we're going to check is the spark arrestor, and that is just an area on the muffler that um, tries to reduce or prevent the ability of sparks to ignite in the muffler, hence an arrestor. The spark arrestor, of course, is located underneath the generator and actually easy to get to, but make sure the muffler and engine have cooled off or you will burn the... yeah. Okay. This nut right here is what we have to remove to actually blow the suet out of the spark arrestor. Now, like I've said before, I've been to the Rocky Mountains before. I've crossed it on, I've crossed the Rocky Mountains on motorcycle and actually got caught in a snowstorm in the process. And uh, I used to ski regularly at Breckenridge, but when I went to Rocky Mountain National Park, I had never seen it the way I saw it there. It's all about the Rockies. I gotta say again that our country does such an amazing job on maintaining national parks for you to enjoy. I have a, a annual membership now, so I'm in there all the time. But when you go in, everything is so taken care of. And as you climb up the beautiful roads, you see wildlife. You see um, babbling streams coming down the mountain and butterflies and wildflowers. And as you continue to climb, you, you, you know, you're driving once again on these switchbacks and beautiful roads and you watch the, the ecological levels dynamically change before you. You know, the pinyon pine and juniper areas to the conifers to the alpine at the top. The weather systems are breathtaking. Completely different when you compare it to Pikes Peak. Rewind the video, check it out for yourself. This is how small the trees get at this altitude. It's like you can make a Godzilla movie here. I think I'm gonna take a nap. It's making me sleepy. The sun is getting low and it makes for some very interesting photography with the terrain out here. Looking up, these are ponderosa pines. And there's an ocean of conifers. Okay, so the generator cooled off. I have reinstalled the spark arrestor drain plug, whatever you want to call it, back into the generator. And um, I have a really happy generator. Um, be sure to check your manual and uh, perform these routine maintenances on your generator per the maintenance schedule in your manual. And your generator will be a happy generator and will not fail you when you need it the most. 
so all loaded up, closed up, zipped up, ready to hit the road, saying goodbye to the uh, Rocky Mountains here, at least this part of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. In about an hour and a half, I'll be in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I'm looking forward to that. So, okay, yes, I'm a museum guy, and I'm in the Wyoming State Museum here right next to the Cheyenne Capital downtown. Don't have a lot of time, they close in 45 minutes, so let's take a quick look around. Looks a lot like a T-Rex, but with longer arms. Okay, apologize for the bug infested windshield. Been covering some miles here in the last few days. Uh, right now, working our way through some of the interesting land formations here. On our way to Lander, Wyoming. And that's gonna put us out still a couple hundred miles from um, our final destination. So we're gonna camp out tonight in Lander and then tomorrow morning hit the road again on our way to Du Bois. Spend a night there one night, and then from there, next morning, make our way into Teton, Jackson Hole area, and hopefully be able to score a campsite in uh, an area just right off of uh, Jackson Lake. Okay, we're just outside of Du Bois, Wyoming, almost to uh, Teton. Pippi doing a little video.
Okay, just arrived here in the uh, city of Wind River. I'm sorry, this is the, this is the city of um, Du Bois, and I am at the Wind River. Camped out for one night. Tomorrow, Tetons and Jackson Hole. Thank you for watching. I'm Bobby Jean, and this is my therapy.